G'day and welcome back to the 40 channel. So it's been a while, I haven't even been able to get back to the cruiser, I've just been really busy, but that's okay, that's just life. Anyway, here we are. So the knuckle, as you saw, we stripped it all down in the last episode. Now the time is to put it all back together. Thanks to online auto parts and chem tools, we've got all the gear we need to put this back together. Now, as you know, and I've already spoken about this, this is a 1965. So there's a number of little differences, mostly all internally, than your later models. So from what I understand, from about 1971 and onwards, it's pretty much all the same and it's pretty common. But this setup has your ball and claw axle setup instead of your normal CV or your constant velocity or your burr field, whatever you want to call it, a little bit different. And as you saw in the last one, it's pretty cool. If you've got an older cruiser and you need to do a knuckle rebuild, this video is for you. So I spent a stack of time off camera just cleaning everything up, prepping it all, repainting it all, measuring and inspecting everything so I could check what I needed to make sure I had everything that I need to do the job. So we've cleaned up the knuckle ball. Everything's cleaned up inside and outside. Righto. So we've inspected the ball on the end of the knuckle, cleaned up the whole ball so there's no burrs, there's no nicks. There's no rust, it's in excellent condition. We've, inspe we've inspected the bearing housings here. They're in excellent condition as well. Um, now we're gonna keep inspecting the rest of the parts. We're gonna get it all back together. Let's get into it. Got these polishing pads from Toolking. They are fantastic for this. It doesn't remove any metal, just cleans off any of this rust and pitting and anything that might, uh, if there's any burrs, there's no burrs on this, which is good. It'll just knock them off and just give it a really nice clean up and give you the result you want. So, without too much hard work, we'll get into it. Oh, that's come up beautifully. So, all we're doing is just removing the last any surface rust, any dirt, grime, or anything that's sort of left on there, just to clean it right up. Okay, so one of the main differences with the internal part is your oil seal. Now, if you've got something from uh, 1970, it's 1971, I'm sure you guys will fix me up if I'm wrong. Onwards, you will have something like this inside. Pop it out, put the new seal in, keeps the oil and the grease separated, fantastic. The older ones have a brass spindle knuckle bush. It looks almost identical to this one, but it's not. Now the problem that I've come across is that they're a different size and there is actually a different part number for your left and your right knuckle spindle bearing. Now if yours is worn or damaged and you need a new one, your only option that I know of is to go down to a machine shop, take down your measurements, take the old one down, and they'll be able to make you one up without too much drama at all. Luckily for me, I was able to find an old manual with this entire setup in it. It actually has you, all your dimensions in it. And we're gonna measure it up and see how it looks, see if it's come up okay. Well, uh, online auto parts, full front swivel kit. So here it is all laid out. And we have pretty much everything we need. So we've got all our bearings, all our gaskets, our felts, our rubbers. So everything we need is here, including to include all our uh, locking tabs, nuts, washers. Now as you saw in the last one, we kept all our shims and we labeled them top and bottom, but they even give you spare shims in case you need some more or you've got damaged shims. We'll get into shims a bit later on. So even the simple little things like your locking tabs, this locking tab has been well and truly destroyed. It's been damaged. And the reason for that is it's probably been used a number of times. They've bent it over, bent it back, bent it over. A few bearing changes in its life and they've never changed that out. And it's, it's no good, it's cactus. So a new one of them, it's even the simple little things like that that you get in the kit that you're gonna need. The old bearings, 
This one's all pretty much really chewed out here. It's got some serious grooving in here. Now you do not want to throw any old bearing back in. Always get new bearings and put them back into your kit. This one has a significant amount of damage. Probably sand and dirt and dust and all that stuff has got in there. There wasn't much grease in these bearings, so we're certainly going to make sure that we really pack these new bearings with a stack of grease. So here's a manual that's going to suit up the, uh, the old bore and claw. And they actually call it, uh, straight from Toyota, bore type joint. They didn't really come up with anything more spectacular than that, so bore type joint. So anyway, first thing we're going to do is we're going to inspect everything. So inspect the shafts. So we're going to inspect this area here. I'm going to inspect where the actual bore sits. We do that on each end of the shaft. Now, center verniers are good, especially good quality ones, but you're not going to get the exact accuracy you need, especially when it talks about in the manual. Now, the manual goes into some pretty awesome detail. So it's saying that our diameter needs to be between 31.970 and 31.991 millimeters. So if you're going to start getting down to that, we're going to need something like a micrometer. And I've also got some telescopic gauges so we can get in and measure the internal spindle as well. Check all our sizes and see how it looks. Right, so here's the area here. I've checked it around. There's no scoring. There's no damage. Some little tiny little grooves in it. But it's no major dramas. Now what we're going to do is check it with our micrometer. Just go until you feel a small little drag. And now you've got your size. We're at 31.9, 5, 6, 7, 8. 31.98. Right, our, our minimum is allowed to be 31.97. So we're just above the minimum. Our maximum 31.991. So, axle's all right. You want to inspect the spline. Now we want to make sure that, again, that there's no damage, there's no major grooves, the spline hasn't um, worn out, otherwise it's going to slip and you're not going to get that drive you need from your diff. Just cleaning out every little spline piece here. Bare fingers are always a great way of finding any damage. If you cut your finger open, you know you've found a burr. This again looks excellent condition. Right now, this is where you're going to need your telescopic gauge and your micrometer. I don't expect you guys to have all this in your shed, but at least get yourselves a good set of verniers and you'll be able to take a measurement in here. This is where we can get our telescopic gauge. There's a lock on the back, push them in. And they're actually spring loaded. Right, I so say our bush measures up at 31.94. Gives me a difference of 0 0.04 of a millimeter between the bush and the shaft. Now it's probably just a little bit too much, but I'm going to live with that, and now you guys know what it is. So, it should be close to about 0 0.02 as far as uh, your normal bush guide sort of go. But um, we're going to live with that. And we're going to put it all back together. But we'll, we'll, but what I will do is measure up all the others, make sure that they're all okay of spec before we put it back together. All right. So, a great little tip for installing your new bearings, your old bearing out of race. We're going to cut a slit straight down it and we can use that to knock in the new bearing without, doing, without doing any damage to the new bearing whatsoever. So, I've shown you this little tip before, we're going to do it again. Right, our new bearing. Take the bearing out. Make sure that when you sit the bearing in its housing that you've got the taper side so you can pull the bearing part out. The last thing you want to do is pull these two separate apart and accidentally put it in the wrong way. 
you're going to be in all sorts of pain. You have to knock it back out and then you could damage your new bearing and it's all over. Get a piece of nylon block, a bit of timber, anything you want to do. You don't want to hit this bearing face with a hammer whatsoever. You want to use something that's soft. Just tap it in. That outer race is now home. You know it's home because, well, one, you can see it sitting at the bottom, but you can just hear a little bit of a difference when you tap it in. Now, another little tip, I know it doesn't sound important, but I, I'm gonna say it is, is that we wanna to try to keep these bearings as a match pair. So, we'll label this top passenger side, so we know that when it goes back together, all the match bearings go to the exact pack that they came from. Right now we've got a nice, cleaned up, painted, beautiful looking knuckle now. So, let's prep it and get it on. So I've got all my shims, they were all bagged up, that's important. Now I've bagged those uh, brand new bearings so I knew we've got top and bottom, so we can match them up. Right now again, so this whole kit is from Online Auto Parts. It's a full knuckle bearing kit, as you saw before, it came with everything we need. So we've got our seals, all our hub bearings, our knuckle bearings. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to pack our bearings full of grease. Once we've packed them full of grease, we're going to put them back in their little bags, just so that way they're ready to go for when we need them. I'm going to use a premium heavy duty Molly type grease. So this is Molly Tack from Chemtools. Now this grease is awesome for what we're going to be using it for. Helps reduce in any wear and friction, and it's going to give a better performance than your normal general purpose grease. So. I recommend using Molly Grease. Other people might disagree, but this is what I've always used and I've never had an issue with Molly Grease, especially the Molly Tack from Chemtools. Now you're gonna make sure that when you take your bearings out of your bags, you don't wanna get any dirt or grit anywhere on these bearings. You wanna keep them as clean as you possibly can. So make sure you've always got bags ready. Right, I'm packing a bearing. We've been through this before and it's fairly simple. Basically all we're trying to do is get grease pushed all the way in through here so it pushes all the way through the rollers. You see it squeeze up through here and squeeze up through your top part here. Scoop your bearing in and then you're just forcing your bearing grease through the palm of your hand. See that? You can see it coming through the top. That's what we want. So we want to do that all the way through. Scoop it in. Once you've done that bearing, chuck it back in the bag. Stop any dirt or grit or sand or anything getting on that bearing at all. You don't want to get anything on that bearing. Seal it up, put it back in the bag ready for when we go put the knuckle back on. All right, so next thing we need to do is put our felt, rubber, and metal on. Before we put the felt on, when we get some grease, you grease up the felt seal. All I'm gonna do is just slide it over the felt. Right, now, so you guys won't be able to do it as fast as that. <laughs> But you get the picture. Carefully slide the felt over the ball, then our rubber, put a little bit of grease on the rubber too, it doesn't matter. And then our steel ring, some metal, rubber, felt. We can get our bearings that we packed, take them out of that little bag, sticky. Drop that bearing on, sit. Our knuckle on top, get our bottom bearing. Right now, now, normally, if you've got the tool, a knuckle aligning tool, I actually have one, but it's no good for the older models. It doesn't fit with the bush gaze. So the only way we're gonna do it there, same way we did the last one, old school. Now our top shims, we bagged them. So we're gonna sit them on top, make sure they're nice and clean. 
drop our top shims on, put our steering rod arm on, our bottom bearing support, I'm just going to put a couple nuts on, okay you just push them on, push it down as nice and tight as you can, I'll drop in a couple of cone washers, put our cone washer, spring washer and nut on the bottom, push it all up, we'll do it up just to hold it in place, do everything up finger tight just to hold everything in place, just putting all the old nuts on because we could have to take this on and off a fair few times depending on our setting. Now I've just got this set to a very low torque setting. Got your torque wrench. So torque it all up to 50 foot pound. Feels nice. There's no notchiness. If it feels notchy, you already know you've done something wrong. Next thing I'm going to do is just go with a cable tie. Put that through our top hole here. Nice and loose. Just going to get my digital scale. Now you can use a fish scale or anything like that. And we're going to check. That way we can check how much tension is on here and whether we need to adjust the shims or not. Now I have the same amount of shims top and bottom, that's the way it came out. I'm guessing from factory, it hasn't been changed. So I've already finished the other side, I actually had to adjust and um, I had to adjust it a couple times to get it right. I'm not sure if there was a shim missing or someone, something went wrong down the track, but we adjusted it so it was right. Right, we want to get from 1.8 to 2.3 kilos of pull. Turn that on. We want to try to keep this nice and straight the whole way around. 2.2, 2.2. I think we nailed this one first go. Give it a couple goes to make sure you're right. Two kilos. Two point one. Right, so we've pretty much got between 2, 2.2 and 2.1, so 2.1, I'm pretty happy with that, I won't do anything with that at all. So now I can continue to put the rest of the knuckle back together. Right, there's nothing more exciting than getting boxes in the mail, well there is for me, my wife just rolls her eyes. So we've got this box from uh, Workshop Supplies Online. Now, what this is, I've used this company through my entire FJ40 build and they make, especially for restoration stuff, so it's awesome. So, so all period correct. You've got uh, your nuts and bolts, washers. So something really cool that wasn't available when I did my FJ40 build was your period correct window hinge bolts. Now this is really, really cool. So normally you go to a fastener shop or something like that, and they would be able to supply you some M8 countersunk bolts, but they just had a flat top on them. These ones have the dome top ready to go. So these ones are as close as you're gonna get as brand new to the original. And I was stoked about that. It's not only for your window hinge, but also for your bonnet hinges. So they will definitely be going onto the FJ40 to give it that extra little bit of a look. I love the domed, I love the dome shaped look on the bolts and I was never able to find them. And these guys have just got them in. So if you want that look, check them out. So all the contact details are down the bottom here. Definitely go check them out. Give Troy a call, he'll be able to help you out with any of the nuts, bolts and fasteners you need. So you can jump online, buy the whole kit. Now it doesn't have everything you need, but the great thing is, you get onto these guys, you tell them exactly what you need, and you can just order. 
extras or whatever you need or you can just buy just what you need you don't have to go buy the whole kit so so if you're keen on getting all new nuts and fasteners and having it sort of period correct jump onto WSO give them a call send them an email and you can get them in zinc you can get them in gold you can get them in stainless steel he has a big selection as well as all your other normal nuts and bolts so check them out right so now the fiddly part we're going to put all our backing plate back on with our rubber and felt and steel seal that all up then we can put the rest of the knuckle together steel plate sits into this groove we get our rubber again it sits into that same groove then our felt actually has its flight fits on top and bottom line those holes up this is where the grease actually helps hold it in place a little bit get our backing plate see if we can get in our first one don't do them up tight yet we'll just put them all in loose let's slide our axle shaft in the tricky part is getting it to line up short side is heaps easier just bring that out there just be patient just wiggle it around work your way in you'll get it there eventually <laughs> All right, that's in. Just give it a bit of a turn, make sure you're happy with that. Done. Uh, before we get too much further, we've got our oil, our oil seal, which also has a felt that tucks into this groove here. Grease the felt up and then we'll jam it in here. Well, we're going to place it in, we're going to jam it in. And then we can have that ready for when we put the rest of it on. Just using the uh, Chemtools Molitac grease. And again, we're just going to work that all the way around in our felt. So get our oil ring, I'm just going to carefully push it in place. Just work your way around, take your time, just slowly massage it back in. So you can get it to seat in. So we've got our felt seal back into our oil seal ring. We've cleaned up. Now these bolts, uh, I've kept these bolts because these bolts have the, uh, the small little hole in the top of them. So when you torque them up, you run the wire around and that way it holds it all in place because there's not much torque on them. Right, so to keep these videos in a more shorter condensed sort of a style, I'm going to finish up with this. This is part two. So part three, be straight up. And part three will focus on fitting up the brakes, setting all the brake assembly up, putting all our hubs, everything back together. So, guys, I really appreciate you watching. If you want to keep up with the content, make sure you subscribe so you can see what's coming up next. Righto, and until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>